One way to improve your SAT score is to be familiar with all the different types of questions that can be asked. Once you become familiar with a certain question type, you won't have to work so hard figuring out how to solve it. With that in mind, let's discuss one of the types of math questions you're likely to see on the SAT. Isolating quantities. If you see a question that has a bunch of variables and asks you to solve for one variable in terms of the others, then you have an isolating quantities question on your hands. There are two ways you can approach these questions. One, pick numbers, and two, do algebra. Let's start by going over the picking numbers approach. As we've learned, whenever you have variables in a question and in your answer choices, you can pick numbers to replace them with. There are just a couple of rules that are especially important to follow when you have multiple variables. Always pick a different number for each variable and be sure to write everything down. Let's put this to practice. Here's a question similar to what you might see on the real test. In baseball, the above formula can be used to calculate fielding percentage, F, based on the number of assists, A, the number of putouts, P, and the number of chances, C. Which of the following expresses the number of assists in terms of the other variables? The answer choices are all algebraic expressions featuring four variables. We'll start by underlining the facts, circling the keywords, and labeling the answer choices. We have four variables in this question and in the answer choices, so let's start picking some numbers. This formula is designed to calculate fielding percentage. As we've learned in previous lessons, when you see the word percentage, it's usually beneficial to try to pick the number 100. Since percent means divided by 100, let's say that C equals 100, so our formula will be dividing by 100. Remember to write everything down. With four variables, it's too easy to make a careless mistake if you don't write down everything. Now let's pick some numbers for the other variables. If we pick a number for F right now, we'll have to do a bunch of work to figure out what numbers work with A and P. But if we start by picking numbers for A and P, we'll be able to figure F out pretty easily. So let's start by picking numbers for A and P. Remember, we need to pick a different number for each variable. Let's say A equals 20 and P equals 30. So F equals 20 plus 30 over 100, which simplifies to 50 over 100 and we can reduce that to f equals 1 half. Now that we have picked all of our numbers, it's time to go to the answer choices. We'll know we have the correct answer if it works when we plug these four numbers in. Let's start with answer choice A. A equals fp over c. Let's plug our numbers in. A equals 20, f equals 1 half, p equals 30, and c equals 100. Does that work? Let's do a little arithmetic and find out. 20 equals 15 over 100? No, so cross off answer choice A. Now on to B. A equals FC minus P. Let's plug our numbers in and see if it works. A equals 20, F equals 1 half, C equals 100, and P equals 30. Let's do a bit of math to find out if that works. Does 20 equal 50 minus 30? Yes, it does. Answer choice B is correct. So we've seen that picking numbers is an easy and reliable way to solve these isolating quantities questions. But there's another method that is sometimes even faster and easier, algebra. When you have a bunch of variables in an isolating quantities question, it can be faster to solve using good old fashioned algebra, but only if you're comfortable with algebra and can do it easily without making mistakes. If you have any doubt at all, use the picking numbers strategy. Let's go over the same question about baseball statistics, but this time we'll solve it with algebra. Once again, here's the question. In baseball, the above formula can be used to calculate fielding percentage, F, based on the number of assists, A, the number of putouts, P, and the number of chances, C. Which of the following expresses the number of assists in terms of the other variables? We know we can solve this question by picking numbers, but this time we're going to try actual algebra. We know that F equals A plus P over C, but as we can see from the answer choices, we want our expression to begin with A equals. So let's see what we can do to get A by itself. First, we can multiply both sides by C 
to move the C over to the other side. So we get FC equals A plus P. Now we just need to subtract P from both sides, and we get FC minus P equals A. Flip that around, and we're looking at answer choice B. Great work! If you get an isolating quantities question, a question that asks you to put one variable equal to a bunch of other variables, algebra can be helpful. But if you're not feeling the algebra, don't worry. The picking number strategy works great too. No matter what you do, practice makes perfect. So why don't you go and take advantage of at least a few of the hundreds of questions this course offers?